This is the Real Deal Podcast on this 29th of October 2019. I'm your man, Surreal Jiro Quinn, taking you for the next, I don't know, who knows, until I stop talking. Uh, been a couple, you know, it's been a while, it seems like, uh, happy to be back here with you. Been kind of getting some things together as far as the podcast goes, but I'm back and my timing couldn't be better considering that the Washington Nationals are on the brink of elimination. Um, this series has just been insane as far as the shifts of momentum. Um, Friday night, Washington comes in up 2-0. The city, the district is just on, just going crazy. And just like that, in one weekend, it goes from playing, playing the, the parade to what the fuck just happened. Like, it's just like that. And that's the thing about baseball. Um, winning streaks, losing streaks. The best team loses a third of their games. The worst team wins a third of their games. It's just just how things go. Um, I am not one of these people who feel like the series is over, that the Nationals are done. They're down 3-2. You have your best pitcher on the mound in, 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 uh, in Strasburg. You win one game. Just get to game seven. Scherzer, Scherzer has been cleared for game seven. All hands are on deck if it gets to a game seven. And... Listen, if they can win two straight games and beat Cole and beat Verlander, who is to say they can't beat Verlander, who's not been good in this postseason and has been bad in the World Series throughout the course of his career, who's to say they can't beat Verlander and then come back and beat Grinky in Game 7? So I, I think that I don't think the Nationals are done by a long stretch. I think that they, you know, getting out of D.C. probably was the best thing that to happen to them. Um, because things can only get up, can go, things can only get better. They were wiped out. I mean, dominated in D.C. I mean, you're talking about being outscored 19-3. to They couldn't get anything. They it couldn't do anything in D.C. It was an absolute disaster. They just, and, and give Houston all the credit in the world. Houston never panicked. Houston is a championship team. Houston, eventually those bats were going to uh, wake up. And we know what Garrett Cole can do, but the Aribe start was the one that really I was surprised about. I did not see that come in five scoreless innings, and uh, you know who knows he could have went six, maybe six or seven. I mean he he was phenomenal. He was absolutely phenomenal. I did not. I I thought for sure. See, I wasn't surprised about Game Three. Sanchez was due to have a poor start, a bad start. He had been dominating the postseason, but you know he's a he's not a great pitcher. He's a good pitcher. He's a solid pitcher, not a great pitcher. So I wasn't wasn't the least bit surprised by that. But what uh, Sanchez did, but what Aribe did, that that caught me off guard. I was not expecting that at all, not in the least bit. That performance, and he was phenomenal. And now again, Houston was not even with even with the uh, the Nationals being up two zero. I never thought the series was completely over. I never thought the national the Houston was going to go quiet and get swept. Um, that team has too much talent. They have too much pride. They are a championship team. There was no way in the world that they were going to go down quietly. Um, but the Nationals have everything in front of them. One game. So all you need is to win, all you need is to win one game. And you give you, you take it back to um you stay in D, you stay in Houston, you give it to Scherzer. And even even if Scherzer is not Scherzer, all hands will be on deck for the bullpen. Um, you know, everybody will be available. And in a game seven, we know anything can happen in a game seven. You will favor Houston, last at bat, home field. But what has home field even meant during the playoffs? Home teams have a losing record in the playoffs this year. So really, home field hasn't meant anything. Um, I think Washington's going to win this game. And I'm rooting for the Nationals, but I think they're going to find a way to win this game. I, I expect Strasburg to be dominant. I really do. I, I can see Strasburg going seven, striking out 
12 or 13. I expect him to be, he has been a historically good postseason pitcher. He's been that good. He's been dominant in the postseason. And I expect that to continue tonight, to be honest with you. So there's no one that I would rather have up if you're the Washington Nationals than Strasburg down 3-2. And all you have to do is get it to Wednesday. That's all you have to do if you're a Nationals. You're not worried about winning two straight. Just get it to Wednesday. Uh, as far as the NFL goes this weekend, um, Sunday wasn't really an eventful day. Um, it, it, a lot of bad games. And you look at the NFL right now, you know, Drew Brees, of course, came back. Uh, the Packers survived, uh, you know, a, a battle from uh, Kansas City. I didn't expect it to be that close. Matt Moore played well. The New England-Cleveland game was interesting because New England's defense has been historic this year. We've we've discussed this um, during the podcast over the course of the season. But if you really think about the quarterbacks that they've played, I mean, it's, it's not exactly – Elway, Montana, and Marino here. I mean, they play some first and second year quarterbacks. They play some guys who are just god awful. And I think that New England, I watched that Cleveland game, and New England's offense it looks average. They look average. They really, they, like, they, you know, Brady, you know, Brady's still decent. I, I don't think he's he hasn't completely fell off the cliff. He's decent. He's not where he's not where Peyton Manning was, say, in his last year. Okay, he's much better than that. But that running game is okay at best. Their receivers outside of Edelman don't get separation. They got they get got rid of Josh Gordon. Uh, they're waiting for the rookie to come back. But who knows what you know he can provide? They traded for Sanu. Um, I think that I, listen. I I think Belichick is really going to be lent is really going to be counting on that defense to carry him to to get him to the Super Bowl. The problem, if you hate New England, is who out there in the AFC can you trust? To be honest with you, who out there in the AFC? I got to see Mahomes come back um, full strength, and Kansas City to me has to do something about that defense. That defense is awful. I mean, there's no way that defense is standing up in the playoffs. If you look at the teams that can win the Super Bowl right now, whether it's New England, New Orleans, Green Bay, San Francisco, uh, all those teams can play defense. Maybe Green Bay to a lesser extent, but their defense, is, Green Bay's defense gets to, the, gets to the quarterback and turns people over. All those teams can play defense with the exception of Kansas City. So... I think Kansas City has to fix that defense. I think New England has basically a pass to the Super Bowl if Kansas City's defense doesn't somewhat improve. I, I don't trust that defense at all. You can run against that defense. You can do whatever you want against that defense. Um, as far as, again, the, again, Cleveland, listen, Cleveland physically handled New England. They really did. And to me, I, there's no way in the world that Freddie Kitchens can be the coach of that team next year if you if you're the ownership for Cleveland. They have they, they have a ton of physical talent. They play some of the dumbest football that you will ever see. They are a penalty, a turnover waiting to happen. It is remarkable how dumb they play. Even Jim Nance, who doesn't call out anybody, was like, "Really? With these mistakes? Like another and another mistake, Tony." Like Jim Nance doesn't criticize anybody, but even Jim Nance couldn't hold himself back from from ripping Cleveland because it, I, I, like, like it's frustrating to watch them waste all the all the all the physical talent that they that they have. But that's coaching, that's organization, that's attention to detail. That's that is nothing but coaching, culture. So um, I really thought they could have, you know, if they had, if they had average coaching, could have beat New England in that game. You, but you knew New England was not going to lose to a Cleveland team that just can't get out of its own way. Uh, San Francisco, I'm not. I was surprised by what they did to Carolina. I really was. I thought Carolina was playing well. I didn't think Carolina would win the game, but San Francisco is a legit Super Bowl contender. They, San Francisco, you know, getting uh, Emmanuel Sanders was big. We know what the tight end can do. We know what Garoppolo what he can do. 
And that defense is just all over the place right now. I mean, Nick Bosa has to be considered as a defensive player of the year candidate. The secondary is improved. Uh, they are as physical of a team as there is in the NFL right now. They really are. So they are t they are definitely to be heard from um, moving forward. As far as the NBA goes, uh, early on, you have had some young players uh, emerge a, a bit Um Trey Young is having a big year so far. You have Carl Anthony Towns is having a big year. Uh, Golden State finally got off the schneid last night. I'm not going to overreact to Golden State their first couple of games. I don't think I think Golden State will find a way to make the playoffs. I really do. I think they will find a way to make the playoffs. If I were the organization, Clay Thompson would not play this year myself. All right, he he just wouldn't. I know they announced that he probably they haven't made an official announcement, but I know Steve Kerr made some comments that more than likely he's not going to play. So it's kind of unofficially announcing that he'll be done for the season. But there's a prevailing thought that if Golden State does make the playoffs, that he will be back for the playoffs. I, I no, I, I'm not wasting Clay Thompson on a team that is not going to win the championship. It is not. That's it. They're not going to win the championship this year. So. Uh, as far as the Houston thing goes, I watched Houston a little bit. Listen, everybody's talking about Westbrook, Harden, Westbrook, Harden. Here, here's the thing. Westbrook will defer to Harden. That's not good. That's not the issue. The issue is what happens when Westbrook finds out that Harden is not a big game player and that Harden's talent does not match his heart. What is, what is Westbrook going to be thinking when that happens? And that's going to happen. It's going, it's going to happen. Now, Harden, prior to last, prior to last night's game, had got off to a slow start. He'll pick it up. He'll average 30. He'll shoot about 40, you know, 43, 44% from the field, get to the line. He'll have a he'll have a typical Harden year, puts up numbers. But in the playoffs, we know how this movie is going to end. And, you know, if you're if, if you're Russell Westbrook, you play with heart and passion. You know, you go zero to 60 in three seconds. What is his reaction going to be when he finds out that this dude is not a big game player? And James Harden is not a big game player, period. Not a big game player. So that, to me, is going to be the most challenging aspect of that, of that, a, of that relationship and what that franchise is going to deal with. They're not a championship contender. We know this. They're gonna be a fun. There, there will be a lot of fun to watch. They'll be intriguing. They'll be somebody that they'll be a team that has nice where you have you shaking your head. Other nice where they'll make twenty three pointers. So um, that's basically it as far as the NBA goes so far. You know, Clippers are the Clippers. We know how talented they are. The Lakers are getting Kuzma back soon. Um, Joel Embiid, Joel Embiid came back last night, but he's already missed a game. So, you know, he's going to be doing, doing his load management thing. And we wait. Kawhi's going to be doing it soon, more than likely. So early start to the, um, you know, decent start to the NBA season. Uh, Kyrie Irving, what's new? Uh, you know, are some rumblings about possible unhappiness. Uh, you know, it's, I cannot wait till Kevin Durant comes back and to see those two together. Like grumpy old men, I, I I just can't wait to see that to see those two in the locker room, in the same for, trying to vie for the team's best player or trying to vie for who's gonna lead Brooklyn. Cause don't I don't care that Durant is a superior player to Kyrie Irving. We all know that. It's not even a debate. But Kyrie believes it's his franchise. He he really does. Taking off the jersey, giving it to his dad. This is Brooklyn, our first win. And like Kyrie, you, you won one game. Like, calm, calm down. There's about 80 more games left. <laughs> He's uh, taking off his jersey, gives it. I like, please, no, stop, stop. Uh, I, come on. So that that storyline is gonna be fun. I, I can't. I I wish Kevin Durant is playing. Obviously for basketball reasons, but just to see him and Kyrie just be miserable together. I wish it just is un it's so unfortunate that Durant's out is going to be out this year. As far as power goes, um, I love the episode. I loved, I loved the episode. Scorched Earth. It was all over the place. 
everybody's snitching, everybody's going for themselves, everybody's in pure survival mode, everybody. And some of the interesting in what they do for this mid-season finale, um, I think it's supposed to be like 70 minutes, hour and 15 minutes, something like that. Uh, they, someone's going to jail now, either Tasha or Tommy. I think here's what I think. Here's my ultimate prediction. Here's my ultimate prediction. And but no, before I get to that, the ghost and Tasha scene that seems to be the most controversial of the scenes. Ghost putting his hands on Tasha. Here, here's what I'll say. I don't advocate no man, even on television, putting their hands on a woman. But when you, as the mother of my firstborn son, introduce him, not introduce him, but try to perfect his drug selling skills when I'm trying to go straight and get into politics. And when you, about a season and a half ago, were talking about going legit, that's when I, that's when I got to draw the line somewhere and like, what the fuck are you trying to do? What are you really, what, what, what is going on? You're his mother. You're his mother. Now, from a character standpoint, it makes perfect sense for Tasha. I've been on this podcast repeatedly saying I don't understand this going legit shit for Tasha. Tasha is not legit. She's a drug dealer. She's about, she wants that life. She's about the money. She's about flossing, stunting, all that. Yeah, she's using Tyreek. I mean, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. She's not talking about... They don't give a shit about Tyreek and trying to save Tyreek's life. Tasha wants to floss. Tasha misses her old life. She's like, period. She misses all the money. So here, you know, she tells Tyreek, I can make you better than Ghost ever was. And da 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 you know, he's clearly using him. And she knows that he hates Ghost at this point. But um, a lot of people, you know, had issues with the scene. Um, a couple of you had issues with the scene. Here, here's the thing: you're watching a you're watching a show about murders and drug dealers. You can't you gotta throw the moral compass away. I'm sorry, you just can't. Don't watch the show. If you have a problem with that, just don't watch the show. It has murder, it has sex, it has violence. It, it just may not be your cup of tea. That's it. And it's not like he beat her up. You know, grabbed her. This was the most disrespectful thing. This right here. That was that was the. That was almost worse than uh, getting him smacking her. That was so disrespectful. But again, if you're Tasha, you got to understand who you're dealing with. Like, this guy is a cold-blooded killer. I know he has a business suit. He's trying to go legit, trying to get his politics, but he's still ghost. He's still ghost. So, uh, again, a lot went on. Um, I don't know why y'all surprised that Dre got away. And was slippery, you know, that's what Dre does. I mean, Dre, Dre, <laughs> it's gonna be when Dre dies, the same people that were complaining about Dre are gonna be whining when they kill Dre. I'm telling you. I think Dre could go in this episode. I definitely think he can go in the season finale. I think that Ghost is gonna set is gonna set up Tommy and Tasha to go to jail. The Terry Silver thing was just too convenient. I cannot see Ghost, even in a fit of rage and emotion, being that sloppy with hiding the body uh, of Terry Silver, putting it in a truck in a car, and then Tasha knows it, knows it like like clockwork where he might put it. I I guess they're trying to get us to sell us on the fact that Tasha knows Ghost so well that she knows his techniques as far as hiding bodies. I guess. I don't believe Tasha, by any stretch of imagination, killed Ghost or killed uh, Terry Silver. I know a lot of that theory is bouncing around. I don't believe that. Uh, this guy that Tasha's messing with, Q, I think he's a Fed. To be honest with you, I think he's a Fed. I think he's a. I, I, that's, that's why I think Tasha's going to get herself messed up with him. And I think Ghost is going to set up Tommy. I really do. I, I think he don't. I, you know, it's going to be. I think it's, it's going to be similar to what. You saw in the wire when Avon, when uh, Stringer set up Avon to go to jail rather than, you know, trying to kill him. Uh, I think you're going to see Tommy, Ghost, do that to Tommy. And Ghost will survive. And uh, Tyreek will hold it against Ghost that he had uh, 
that he'll, you know, what he'll think. See, I don't think Ghost is going to be directly responsible for, for Tasha going to jail. I think that Tyreek will blame Ghost for that, will think that Ghost set Tasha up to go to jail. And I think both Tommy and Tasha will be schooling Tyreek on uh, drug dealing and telling. Here's what I think ultimately. This is what big picture. We are leading towards a final showdown. Not only next season, but the Book of Ghosts, Power Book 2 Ghosts of a Tyreek versus Ghost showdown. In order for us to take that showdown seriously, Tyreek needs some more reps, okay? Tyreek versus Ghost is no, it's not a contest right now. And I know Tyreek popped off at the mouth, yeah, I'll kill you. Da, da, da. Tyreek is no match for Ghost at this point. He's just not, he's not ready. He's not ready. He's, he gets caught too much. Vincent called him, Tyreek, Ghost, and Tommy had to save him. He, he's not on that level right now. Tyreek, he needs some more experience. So next season, you will see Tyreek getting schooled by Tommy, by Tasha. You'll see Tyreek getting his hands dirty. And then by book of by Power Book 2, Ghost, Tyreek will be a full-blown kingpin. And Ghost will be end up into politics. And he will be at his he will be at his most vulnerable because I think Ghost. They're going to set it up to where Ghost will be at his most vulnerable because he will be re so removed from the street life and crime. And Tyreek will be where Ghost was at when when we started this series off in 2014. Now, I'm not automatically going to say that Tyreek is going to kill Ghost. I know a lot of people are predicting that. I'm not automatically say that's a guarantee. That is likely the end the final episode of Power Ever, but that's not a guarantee. I can't, I'm not ready to go on that limb quite yet. But there we are, you are going to see a season's worth of Tyreek versus Ghost. The idea that you people think that they actually would kill Ghost before the last episode of Power Ever is insane. It's not going to happen. Like, Omari Hardwick is what, Tony, James Gandolfini was in Soprano. Brian Cranston was the Breaking Bad. He is the show, period. And I know Tommy's the favorite character of a lot of people. Of, and he's my favorite character. Kanan was probably my second favorite character. But the so the show, everything centered around the show is about ghosts, period. And Amari Hardwick. So these not they're not they're not killing that character until the very very last episode of uh, of Power. So we'll see what happens. But in terms of tonight, again, game six, Nats trying to avoid becoming ghost. And hopefully this will not be the last day or night of the NBA, of the Major League Baseball season. I think, and I, I sincerely believe this, you, we will see a game seven come tomorrow night. I'm out.